Gags, get over here. He is one of our all-time favorites. Thank you, Dallas. That Absolutely. is a uh, great thing, telling, uh, seeing what Stephen Vogt means to this club and obviously honoring him uh, tomorrow means so much. And our next guest, uh, he means a lot, no doubt. As, you know, I was thinking about, I was thinking about you when Stu was getting honored. It was such a magical day when they're retiring his jersey because it became more than just honoring Dave Stewart as you had your guy Skipper out here, Tony La Russa. Uh, you had Eck. You, you had a big Mac showed up. Carney was here. Steiny was here. And it was like a celebration because I think when you honor Dave Stewart, you're honoring Oakland baseball, and I think you're honoring the 89 team. It was a special day. I wish you would have been here. I always miss the good parties. I don't know what, <laughs> what, what the deal is with that. They, I, I got Some of these guys don't have to work anymore. I still have to work to, pay, to put food on the table, you know. So, um, yeah, I, it, you know, being a part of that whole uh, uh, timetable, uh, it's nothing but good memories. And uh, to hear those names, um, it really makes you proud to say you were in Oakland A. You know, you, you, you wore the green and gold. It's something that, uh, uh, you know, is, uh, you know, you feel like I've always been part of this family and yeah. I always will be. You know, every time I come back, I get such a, a great greeting from, you know, the, the, the workers, the security guards, the, uh, you know, the clubhouse guys and then the fans. Every once in a while you get a little spattering of uh, the fans saying welcome home, you know, and, and uh it really makes you feel good and, and, you know, definitely be proud of that, that uh, era that uh, we were, you know, brought to the, the city of Oakland and, and uh, it was exciting times for all of us. And uh, it's something that, um, you know, uh, we're all blessed to say that we were a part of those teams. Well, and, and I just, you know, you can talk about the, the three straight world series, but when you really look at the team that won in 89, and because of the earthquake, you don't have the parade. You don't have what a lot of teams I think about. You know, you guys are down in Southern California. You think if you win a championship during COVID, you saw with the Dodgers, they didn't get that with the COVID thing. But you guys truly were one of the greatest teams that's ever been assembled. Yeah, we, we were, you know, we, we were definitely impressive, you know, uh, uh, you know, when we walked onto the field. You know, the, the, the size of those guys were just, uh, uh, they carried, they, we all carried ourselves bigger than, you know, we actually were, you know, and uh, <laughs> uh, for, my, for my sake, anyways, the other guys are pretty darn big, but, uh, but those guys, you know, it was, yeah, it was, it was fun to be a part of that. It was fun to watch the other teams come out and watch our big boys take batting practice, you know, and, and uh, it was something that, uh, you know, we look forward to every day. And it was, it was a time for Hosey and, and McGuire to show off a little bit, which they did. Um, and they loved it. I mean, we go into different cities or we'd have to go into the, uh, the back door to, to get in because there's so many fans, you know, we're, we're a rock group, you know, rock, rock stars. And, and, uh, uh, it was, it was a exciting, exciting time, but at the same time, uh, we didn't lack, uh, you know, the need or the knowledge of, of working every day. You know, these guys, we all worked, uh, we had a, uh, uh, similar goal every single day, and that was to compete and win a ball game. And uh, that was what that's what was the amazing part of what Tony Larusa did with this team. We had so many different characters on that team, so many superstars, Hall of Famers, you know, and then just peons like myself. But he found a way for us to once the bell rang from the first pitch on, be ready for the first pitch. We'll never forget that. You better be ready for the first pitch because that's when the team that game could be made or broke. And uh, we went in with that attitude every single day, every single game for, you know, five, six years. And uh, it worked. And, you know, we played as a group. Um, you, know, every, you know, everyone had their, their accolades and, their, and their, you know, their records and all the things that they ended up doing. But at the time, it was only what can you do to help the team win today? And I swear to God, we had 25 guys every day thinking that way. After the game is a different story. <laughs> but thank once, God you didn't have Twitter back in your guys' oh my, day. Oh, thank God. You're right. There's, oh my there's, God. Cell phones? Oh, oh no. forget about it. But but it was it was amazing to see that machine work uh and be guided by Tony and then 
And then basically he picked his guys, his players that he knew would, um, you know, be the bulls of the team and, and help run the team. And, and he, he didn't have to police anything after that. We policed ourselves, you know, and, and, uh, uh, it was a, it was a tremendous, um, uh, group to be a part of and, uh, be ready to come out here and fight and compete every single day was, it was just, just part of it. And, and that, that was the fun of it, you know, and, and we challenged each other, um, when, uh, we pushed each other, we cried together, we fought together, we partied together. And, um, you know, to this day, we're all, we're all still brothers. And, and, uh, you know, when we see each other at these celebrations, it's, it's always something special for us to be part of. Yeah. That day was it, no question was, was really, really special. When I think about the A's and the angels this year, I've been asking this question. We had Aldo on yesterday and I think the same for you. You're a teacher at heart. You love to teach. You love to coach. In a year like this where all the fans are like, oh, my God, the worst thing ever, most players ever used, you know, the records aren't what you want to be. But there's a lot of teaching going on. You guys get back to a lot of basics, a lot of fundamentals. What's that been like for you this year? Well, you know, that's, you know, that's why you coach, you know. Um, and, and you said it right. I, I don't consider myself a coach. I consider myself a teacher. And uh, I've always been, uh, you know, respectful and proud of all the different teachers I had when I was a player. And I always said that, you know, uh, when I became a teacher or became a coach, I wanted to be one that I would want my own son to have. And, uh, uh, you know, to be uh, respectful to the player, to be open to the player. But at the same time, you know, there's times you have to set set down the hammer and let them know that you got to get certain things done in order to be successful in this business. It's not, a, it's, it's a man's game and, and it's, it's not easy to, to be a, a major league player or else, you know, we'd have all kinds of them running around, but um, yeah, it, you know, the, the, the thing is, like you said, teaching, we just, we just went through our um, team uh, uh, exit meetings and we went through every single player. And what are you going to say to a Mark? I mean, a, a Mike Trout or, Oh, Shohei Tani, you know, after in the, in the, you know, in the meetings, as far as being crit critical with these guys or critique their play. And uh, basically we talked to them and they felt that they got better in a lot of aspects of their game. Mike Trout became a better outfielder and he's worked at it. And he, and he, and this year he really worked at it. Uh, Shohei Otani became a better uh, uh base dealer, better teammate as far as communicating with the rest of his players, even though there's a language barrier. Yeah, no doubt. You know, and that's important, you know, and, you know, Anthony Rendon, he he became more open to being that type of leader that we need. So there's the three top players in our game, and they were actually learning something in a, in a year that was, you know, something that we're hopefully we'll forget about real soon. But um, that's the beauty of the game. There's if, if you come in with an open mind, uh, there's something that'll be learned every single day. And, uh, you know, I've been in the game for a few years now and, yeah. uh, um, there's a nice little career you've, you put together <laughs> for been, yourself. I, I've been very fortunate, <laughs> no doubt, but it's, it's something that, uh, I've always brought with me to the ballpark every day. What can I learn today? Who can I learn it from? You never know who you're going to learn it from. You might learn it from a Chris Townsend. You never know. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you might listen up. You might learn something. I can't wait for the shifting to be gone. Get oh, off, get God. off my lawn, Mike Gallego. Yeah, I want right. shifting gone. I feel you, brother. We're we're, we're gonna play baseball get... again, right? Hey, hey, guys, are swear to God, we played a game last night that was three hours and forty nine minutes. To <laughs> joke, we're actually gonna get guys. I know this this is gonna be rare. They're gonna get on the mound. They're gonna throw the baseball. Guys are gonna hit it. There's going to be players in proper position. We're going to actually play the game of baseball starting next You're year. You're going to have to, like, read a bat. You're going to have to read a swing. You're going to have to get a jump now. You don't just stand on your dot. I'm looking forward to that. Wait, where's my card? <laughs> Where am I supposed to stand here now? Oh, God. I, I can't I can't stand watching a player. Your guy's pitcher last night, your lefty, he was, like, 36 seconds to the plate. Mm, Thirty, Almost 40 well, seconds. That's terrible. It's terrible. We know that. And... That's going to be a big part of the game, too. The pitch clock is going to be huge. You know, I never thought we'd have to get to that, but I'm all for that, too. I mean, these games are ridiculous. And, yes, what what is the what is the reason for these pitchers to take so long? 
because their pitch comms not working. Yeah. They can't hear or they don't have the right card in their pocket or, you know, I, I, that has something to do with it. But uh, it'll be interesting to see how that how that, uh, you know, pitch clock works. And, and I know I it's, they said it's been very successful in the minor league. So we're looking forward to it. And if we can speed these games up, by all means. And I'm thinking for you as a middle infielder or for anybody, especially if you're a corner outfielder, if a guy's taking 35 seconds, I mean, how are you not? My, your mind's going somewhere else. Getting these guys on the mound, throwing strikes, boy, that really helps out for your defense. Time of possession is a big, is a real, it's definitely <laughs> real. <laughs> you see a, a, a Mike Trout out there standing out there for 20 minutes after he just hit a home run and took the lead, and now we're giving up three more runs because of time of possession out there. It, it definitely wears on you in a losing season, especially. And, uh, well, I mean, any type of season. But, uh, yeah, you want to try and keep the, the pitchers. Some of these young pitchers, I don't know if they are uh, totally in tune of what's going on behind them sometimes because they're so locked into their pitch comms and their their pitch, you know, their, their catchers calling the signs and stuff. But, um, you know, and, you know, our infielders too afraid to get too close or else it'll be a, a visit, you know, so you can't you can't really communicate with your oh, pitchers yeah. sometimes either. So. There's a lot of things that are you know, a little different, you know, but um, hopefully, um, you know, well, winning solves all, all problems. You it's know, the greatest deodorant <laughs> of all time. Winning solves them all. Clears so up any we'll, snake. We'll put up with anything if you're winning. But when you're losing, you can definitely find the warts out there in this game. And, and hopefully we can uh, uh, put the right solution on those and, and smooth it out a little bit. Shohei Otani. Obviously, we've actually talked to you about this already, about the greatness and the talent. And I, we've talked to Unicorn and everything. But it's my job to also look at baseball. And we've been looking at it. And I started kind of looking at some data. He's so phenomenal, but there's a but for me. And I brought this up with one of your guys' writers. And I said, hey, listen, anytime you ever bring up Shohei, and if you say anything that might be critical, you're going to look like a jackass. I get it. But there is something about a player that never plays defense and a guy that you got to have a six man rotation. Cause that means you got to have a lot of starters. And I know we have to have a lot of starters. So his talent is so great. Are you still trying to figure out though, how to maximize it the best way you can to get more vol volume out of this great talent? Let's put it this way. You're an owner. You just signed him for a $30 million extension. I'm, I'm playing him every day. I'm playing him in the field. And don't ask me that. I'm, this is literally, we, he's we, playing shortstop. He's... We tried it, um, you know, last year a little bit. I think he went out there a couple innings. Three, four times. Three, four times. No ball hit to him. Nothing was ever hit to him. <laughs> and we all went, wiped our bro after the inning was over, and like, thank God nothing happened. But, you know, yeah, I'll tell you one thing. He's He would be all for it. Shohei would be all for it. He's a gamer, right? Oh, my God. The ultimate gamer. He is. He loves being out there. He he loves playing. He wants to be in the lineup every single day. And he gets mad at us when we shut him down on, on stealing bases. I mean, it's like, why am I not? Why don't you give me the green light? You know, what what's going on? Well, you know, pitcher's kind of quick to the plate. And he's at, he goes, yeah, but the catcher's slow to the second base. So it evens out. I can steal off this, this combo type of thing. He's a student of the game. Um, loves the loves the play. He's one of the first guys at the ballpark every single day. Um, he has his own he has his own routine, but he knows what it takes to be prepared for each and every day. So, would we like to see him out there on the field more often? Who wouldn't? I mean, this guy's this guy's uh, you know uh, an entertainer. You never know what he's going to do out there. And uh, he never he, he never su surprises us when he does something special. Oh, I got to tell you, this is it, it, it continues to be. And I did this with uh, I uh, we did this yesterday and it continues to amaze me where they keep bringing up in these notes about, well, you know, he could be traded in the offseason like, as an owner. Are you out of your mind? How much money the Angels are making off him from Japanese corporations? I mean, the amount of money this guy may generate more money for a franchise through advertising than any player in the history of baseball. Well, there's definitely a lot of fans that follow him everywhere we go. Right. Oh yeah. And they, and they're not sitting in the, in the cheap seats. They're, they're sitting in the front row trying to, trying to just have him look at him. You know, they've got every at bat, there's cameras, phones that are just being run through every single at bat. When he walks into the dugout, when he sits up top step, people are just, you know, the security guards are constantly pushing people away from our dugout 
because they just want to get a glimpse of Shohei Otani. He's he's obviously a folk hero and uh, he's so humble about it. It's amazing. He's such a, he's he's a kid at heart, um, and he plays hard every single. Watch him run the first base every at bat. You know he, he doesn't have to run like that, but he does. Um, it, it's just amazing to watch a kid with so much talent, so much stardom that is so humble and plays the game as hard as he does every single time he's on the field. It's 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 a pleasure to watch, very refreshing to watch. And you got two of those guys, like a Mike Trout and, and Shohei Otani. We're blessed to be a part of that organization, to be able to see that every day. Well, you're the only person in franchise history that has an action figure. It's not a bobblehead. <laughs> it's not I can not a beady baby. It's not whatever fad's going on. You were an action figure, the only guy in the history of the Oakland Athletics that the greatness of Mike Gallego became an action figure. Well, it was actual size too, so no one ever <laughs> talked about that. So, <laughs> um, but I do appreciate Billy for keeping me around for that day because I know uh, he had a, had other plans for me in mind uh, as soon as Wash got into town. So uh, he kept me around for that day, anyways, and uh, ended up ended up departing from the Oakland organization, which was a very sad day for me, but. Uh, I do appreciate everything that the Oakland organization uh, gave to me and my family and how they treated me here. It was, it was always something very special and something I'll never forget. And, you know, the, the uh, friendship that Billy and I have is unique, um, but he's uh, always going to be I always, always respect Billy for uh, what he's done with this organization and, and for the game. Well, you'll always be loved and always be a big part of this franchise history as a player, as a coach. You know that, so it's always great to have you on. Have a good off season, and can't wait to see it spring training. Appreciate it. It's always fun. You look good, by the way, huh? I'm, I turned fifty. Out? I got a fifty, big five zero. Yeah, I got to right. get back. And got, got a little worried. Got to get in shape. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like it yeah, changes. We got we got it changes. You it gotta, changes fast. You got to make adjust. It's a game of adjustments. You All of a sudden, keep adjusting. I'm not going for par fives like I used to. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hey. I got to get it back. Yeah, you get we're going to chipping game. Get it close. <laughs> the great Mike Gallego. We got Stephen Boat coming up next right oh, here on A's. I'm stay Cast around Live. for that one.